Oh, he already there. Did you know that we spend average four to six hours a day on Facebook alone, especially us Filipinos? Did you know that you can actually monetize and earn from doing something online? Today's Passionpreneur episode 37, we have a special guest who will teach us how to earn online. Hi fam! Hi guys! Welcome again to Passionpreneur. Again, this is your host, Sir Chubby. And I'm so excited today because we have a very special guest and he's an online marketer and let's all welcome Mr. Fibu Lim. Hello, my name is Fibu Lim. I'm 22 years old and uh, I'm an online entrepreneur. I was able to grow my business from zero to over 10 million pesos in sales in less than six months. Actually, when I was still young, I wanted, I, I dreamed to become successful, to become financially independent. Wow. And uh, my mom told me that for me to achieve my, my, my dream is I should study hard and uh, have good college. grades, yeah, <laughs> and then find a good job, yep. and then uh, climb the corporate ladder and so that I can be able to buy whatever I want. So basically, yep. it boils down to studying. So actually, I did that. Um, I studied very hard, and uh, eventually, I was able to graduate um, with honors, but doesn't mean that I'm smart. Sometimes, I just read the book five times for me to understand. Wow. So that's how I, I So you studied. worked hard for it? Yes, um, I believe I'm not blessed. I'm not intellectually intelligent. I just think that I, I need to I, I need to work hard work to harder. achieve um, compared to other compared to other people. Yes, because other, other people they just need one one read lang tapos they understand. Yeah. So it was difficult for me. It was very difficult. And okay. uh, when I graduated, um, when that's, what's your course bro? Um, accounting technology. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when I graduated, that's when life hit me because I was unemployed for around two years because um, I was able to achieve um, I was graduated with honors and um, have some awards but at the end of the day com when I applied to companies it's either they reject me or I didn't want to apply to that company so at the end of the day I decided not to work and I decided to just learn and learn from mentors and pursue what I really love okay so uh, Talking about that, um, at what certain age or time did you really find what you enjoy, what you love? Yeah. So when I was still, uh, when I was still a child, when I was still studying, I was selling um, different kinds of stuff like junk foods to my classmates, and wow. um, uh, yeah, because I, I remember that when I was still young, grade one, I think, grade one or grade two, I asked my mom to buy me toys, <laughs> and then uh, let's say. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with those military toys. That's very okay, okay. So I, I told my mom to buy packs of those. And what happens is I sell it to my neighbors for one peso each. Wow. So what happens is I don't make a profit actually. I just love the feeling of selling it to my neighbors. Oh, so okay. um, I, I didn't realize that I was at a loss and my mom didn't know until now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe around grade 4, grade 5, I tried to sell to my classmates. With a profit na? Now, with a profit, here's the thing. Um, are you familiar with Shanghai Lumpia and the junk food? Yep, yep. Yeah, no. So, you buy that inside the inside store for one peso. Yeah. I yeah. sold it to my classmates for five pesos. Wow. So, they, but they classmate. didn't... Mga dato, mga dato, mga classmates ako na. Okay. So, I was, it, that was a good business because wow. I didn't have to sell when for I went to school. <laughs> okay. Wow, so, that's, that's how you started. Though. Yeah, and that's what really happens is after I, I have the money, I give it to my mom. So I really think that it wasn't because of the money. I, I believe that it was my passion to sell and to serve people. Wow. So yeah, that's how I found my passion. And what happened is I still believe from that day on, I'm still, I still believe that um, I still need to study hard to achieve the, the success that I want to achieve. Yeah. But on maybe around um, on, on my journey on college I was invited to a network marketing business and that's when I realized that wow it's not that's a, that's what really opened your eyes yep yep that's what opened my eyes okay. um, it was from that day that grades was was just a paper it doesn't translate to your success in life wow. and uh, 
Yeah, it's totally different. So that's how I was trained to sell. That's how I was trained to lead, and that's mm -hmm. how especially I was the trained. leader and uh, the leadership skills and the uh, yep. selling skills. Yep. you were refined. Okay. Yeah. So after that, to make the long story short, uh, I did it for two years, and eventually I did not succeed. But I was able to earn a lot, uh, some money. And some. When you some say money. some, like enough, uh, enough for a teenager or for a professional. Um, I think it was enough for a professional. Wow. That was some. But some. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's say it was around uh, one fourth of a million, so around 250. Wow. So it was a huge amount for me, but I was a saver that time because I was my, my dad. My I'm, I'm Chinese, by the way, uh, so yeah. I was name, no? yeah, <laughs> I was uh, taught how to save, but not. But my parents were employees for 40 years, so wow. I wasn't taught how to build a business. Or invest. Yep, invest also. So I was only taught how to save, how to be kuripot, and that's it. <laughs> no? uh, so that was my mentality before. I didn't know. How, I, I, be, I believe that for me to become rich, I need to save and save and just save until I accumulate so much wealth. So it, it was that you had the discipline but didn't have the mindset that you should be putting it in, in, this, in businesses yep. and investments. Yep, wow. that's right. And so. what happened is, um, I was able to save around yeah half a million and then I decided since I wasn't in control of my business in my network marketing business because it was because of my conflict with my uplines and etc. Yeah, that's so, usually a thing with uh, network marketing. Yeah. Those who are uh, planning to learn to be entrepreneur, it's a good start to yep. try network marketing or direct selling or yep. selling something. That's right. And um, I, I started a traditional business, small traditional, it's um water refilling station. And then, because I thought na I wanted to earn passive income and everyone wants to drink water. So, <laughs> I, I built it and to make okay. the long story short, after two months, it shut down and closed. So, I, <laughs> I, I had more income in my network marketing than had my traditional business. So, to make wow. the long story short, all my savings were back Great. to zero. Okay. How did you start in your learning journey? Specifically in being an online marketer. Yep. Uh, after I went through network marketing, mm -hmm. they... I actually learned a lot of lessons from there. Yep. They told me that for me to grow, I should learn. For me to earn, I should learn first. Okay. So from that on, I read books, I attended seminars, okay. and I learned from mentors. Because my mentor once told me that there are two types of learning. First is you learn from your experience, and second is you learn from other people's experience. Yeah, yeah. That's, so, and that both will make you grow faster. Yep. So it's, it's up to you, which do you choose? Do you learn from other people's experience or do you want to experience it on your own? Well, yep. for me, that's the reason why I was able to shortcut my success because instead of undergoing failures, I learn from other people's failures yeah. instead. So yeah. through that, um, I applied it into my life and it became much, much easier. But it doesn't mean I did not fail. I still <laughs> experience failures. But the okay. thing is, na, na, na reduce na siya into yeah. a much faster way. Because you already have a benchmark or a story from another person on the experience. Yep. Okay, so what was the first things that you did for yourself that made you learn more on marketing online? What I did? Yep. Yeah, so basically what happened is um, after, after, after network marketing, I wanted, I, what, what happened is I wanted to learn personal finance. Okay, so you started first with personal finance. Personal finance. And there was a company that I joined in, in personal finance. And then I wanted to promote that company, but I did not want to do offline marketing again. I wanted the traditional to, way. Yes, I wanted to do online so. marketing. So what I did is I searched online on how to market a business online. So that's what how that's how I find online marketing. So wow. from there I, I searched, I I, I I went to Google, I buy all those courses and uh, to make the long story short, I was mind blow and I got overwhelmed. And, wow. And um, I experienced failures because when people when, here's the thing, a lot of people think that information is free, is available on the internet. Yep, so they yep. search on Google, YouTube, yep. and what happens is they get overwhelmed, they get yep. uh, mind blow, and they decided to stop because for them it's too difficult. Too difficult or too, too complicated or too, too expensive. Yep. So what, what I learned is I really believe that there's no such thing as free lunch. So don't ever think... There's no such thing as free lunch. <laughs> If there's free lunch, there is something in the middle, or there's an upsell. But <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So continue. so because um just just a few weeks ago, I actually attended a free seminar, 
and people basta free they attend but when basta paid a few people attend yeah but, those who are only more hungry yeah what what happened to me is right now i do not most of the time i don't attend free seminars because for me True. it takes up my time and the, it doesn't mean if it's a free seminar the quality of information presented there is also you know it might also be free i mean it's not it's not <laughs> it's as just valuable as start. yeah so yeah um that's how i did it and i i followed a mentor and i i went all in even if i didn't have enough i saved and then i like i have i have different rockets and then okay. i saved instead of spending it I invested it in myself, in my knowledge, and that's how I was able to acquire the knowledge. And from that knowledge, I was able to use it into my life and yeah. teach people also the same uh, concept. Uh, now, uh, how long have you been in the online marketing business? Um, around maybe bago pala mga two to three years. Two but three what years. happened is I went all in. So what do I mean by all in? People think, um, people say I've been here for ten years, but doesn't mean literally there ten were years there, actually. because. I was working like 25 hours a day. What do I mean wow. by 25 hours a day? If God will give me another hour to work, I'll do I'll do everything to maximize it. Wow. So that's why I really say that two to three years for me is like 10 years of experience. Yep. Yeah. So now, most of the people will be asking, so how does it work? How does an, an online marketer earn? Okay. Um, I just want you to realize that People or companies right now focus their budgets on newspapers, billboards, television, yeah. radio, right? And they still believe that these platforms. They still believe. That's so good. <laughs> these platforms are the thing to promote their business. But if you think about it, the average Filipino spends four to six hours on Facebook. Yep. And then, Especially Filipinos. Yes. And then um, an average Filipino spends nine to ten hours on the internet. So we spend more time on the internet than sleeping. So, and if you think of it, when we are driving our cars and there's traffic, what do we look at? Do we look at billboards or do we look at our phones? Yeah. We look at our phones. Yeah, I'm not, I don't look up because uh, I'll be caught. I listen to a podcast or YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so basically when we wait, we look at our phones. So our attention span right now, it's not on the television, not on billboards, but yeah. on our phones. Yep. So the thing or is... Desktop. Yep. <laughs> or are you are you are you advertising where the attention span of the of people are in? Because there is what you call commercial blindness, billboard yes. blindness. Yep. Have you noticed where you watch TV and when the commercial comes, you, you become don't care. you don't care. You become so, blind. Yep. That's right. So um, I, that's how we should think about it. And we, because I really believe in trends. And you, my mentor once told me that don't be the first person. Uh, to start a trend and don't be the last person to be in. Okay. In the Philippines, don't be the first. To don't be the first or the last. The last to start. So a trend. you should be within less than. If if one is the first, ten is the last. You should be around um, less than five. Okay. Now the thing is, in the U.S., online marketing is around seven to eight. So it's nearly seven at to the eight peak. years. Seven, not years. Parang seven, range lang. A range. Okay. Yeah. So ten is the maximum. Let like let's say the. How do you call that? Yeah, the, the, the luggers, the luggers. Yep, yep. This, this is, the this is related to Simon Sinek's um, yep. flow of uh, customers. Of us, if, if, that, if that is the trend, sev, um, US is around 7 to 8. Well, the Philippines is still around 2 to 3. So it's still starting as a trend. That's why it adds uh, the cost per uh, acquisition is very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the thing is, if trends come, you have two choices. You stop the trend or you ride the trend. But th the thing is, when a wave comes, you can't stop a wave. All you yep. need to do is just to ride the wave. Flow with it. <laughs> so the question is, are you willing to ride the, ride the wave? Okay. And by the way, this online marketing just doesn't only apply to business. It also applies uh, to your personal life, to your branding. Yep. And uh, basically, it affects every person's life. Yeah, so that's what, what we've been saying. If you are an artist, you should be online. If you yep. are a painter, you should be online. You should, if you dream to be a singer or to record your own songs, you should be online. Right? Yep. So, um, again, how does it work? How does the online marketer earn online? Yeah. So, uh, when I started, before I taught people how to market online using traditional business or through the internet, yep. I started selling digit, what you call, because there are two types of products you can sell online. First is oh. what you call 
physical products. Second is what you call digital or information products or intangible. Let's let start with that. Physical products are examples. Right. Physical products are basically anything. So it can be sunglasses, it can be bracelets, it can Necklace. be yep, it, basically anything. Okay. So as long as it's physical. Yes. So <clears throat> more on the physical, this is what you call e-commerce. Yep. Or what you call what I did is what you call drop shipping. Yeah. Where basically I I got supply from my supplier and from that supplier it directly ships to my customer. Wow. So the advantage is I don't handle inventory and so no um, cost of inventory, storage, rental, etc. Yep, so that's the advantage. And I have a lesser risks because if the product does not sell, it's okay because I haven't bought it yet. Yep. It's, you just marketed it online. Yep, that's okay. right. So second is information digital products. And I think this is one of the things that is very, very has a very huge potential because in digital information products we don't have a cost. Yep. It's all information. That's what uh, Robert Kiyosaki once said. We are in the information age. H. So what does that mean? Our the most valuable asset we have right now is information. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the more information we have, the richer we are. Yep. So the, those who have more information that apply it, yep. the, the, the key that apply is is the one who wins. Yes. So what are examples of digital products? Yeah. So digital products, product or information products can be like video courses, ebooks, mm -hmm. and um, softwares. Actually, there's a lot of um, digital products as long as it provides information to you. But because here's the thing, people think that after school, our our learning stops. Stops. Yeah. So that's where people do not grow. And school is just 20% of our entire life, or maybe 10%, or maybe just 5%. Yep. So, so true. our learnings is like um, unlimited. So the more you learn, basically, the more you grow and you become a better person and the more you eventually earn and become successful. Yeah. So information right now is very, very expensive and it gets very, very expensive. Yep. Um, personally, I sell my video courses around 30,000 per program. Wow. And the reason why I was able to sell it is because the information is very, very valuable. Yep. So basically, and my cost is zero. So if I don't sell it, if I can't sell it, I have zero cost. There's zero in the phone. So that's the advantage. Um, wow, that's very nice, Steve. But before that, I'd just like to thank our venue for today, um, Mr. Eric Smith of Dura Pizza, one of the best pizza in Cebu. If you're looking from, for a chill place and some yummy food, Handura Pizza would be one of the best in Cebu. Going back to online marketing, a lot of our followers are actually artists, um, photographers, videographers, models, and handsome people like me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they want to monetize their talent, their skills. Their handsomeness. Yeah, their handsomeness, <laughs> no? their guaponess. Uh, their body. <laughs> so, what will be your advice for them to start um, uh, doing online marketing? Alright. So, people right now, as they, they can be videographers or they can be writers, they can be basically anything. The thing is, people out there also want to become a videographer, also want to become a writer, also want to become, let's say, you know how to play the guitar, who wants, yeah. wants to learn how to play the guitar. So, the thing is, there are a lot of schools that monetize through like learning how to play the guitar, how to, yeah, how yeah. to play the violin. The yeah. thing is, right now, we don't have to go to the school. You can learn it online, which is yes. number one, cheaper, and you can learn it at your own pace, and you can also review. Yeah, you so, can even pause them. <laughs> yeah. So basically, if you know how to, let's say, play the guitar, and you've been doing it for a couple of years now, you can teach people, especially the beginners, how to play the guitar, and you can monetize it through that. Yep. So basically, if let's, you have first you have to find what is your passion, your passion, or your learnings, or what you are interested in, and it it can be it can be as like playing computer games. It can be even that. games, yep, right? That's right. There are a lot of people who are selling courses for how to beat games. Yes, because um, people are actively looking for information, looking for solutions. Yes, and. As, as what I've said, if, um, as what I've said, it doesn't mean that information out there is already available. They won't buy your program because yeah. they want convenience, they want quality, yep. and they want it to be concise. In yep. which you are a solution provider to their problems. Our followers usually we give them a framework of what to do. Yes. Can you please share to them how can they re um, like sort of steps or a framework to her so that they can start already? Alright, so I call this the five-step system or five-step framework 
First is identi identify a profitable market or a profitable niche. Second step is promote a product. Promote a product. Okay. Third is build your own website or build a sales funnel or your online store. Fourth is drive quality traffic or drive quality people to your website to see eyes on your website. And fifth is the final step to automate and to scale your business so that our business can run on its own and you don't have to do it. Uh, what's your message for all those people out there, for the, all those fashion entrepreneurs? Uh, what would you like to tell the world? The thing that made me who I am today, it's because I value uh, growth over money. People right now, they focus on short-term gains, short-term growth, yep. that they want to earn, they want to achieve that success. Yeah. And here's the thing, if you want to become successful, you should focus 10, 20, 30 years from now. What do you want to become? Because growth is actually an intangible asset where you yeah. can monetize in the future. Yep. So again, um, since also, one, one, one more tip, we only have limited, we only have a limited span of life in our, in our, in our life, right? So we should be happy in everything we do. Yeah. And for us to be happy, it should be our passion. And yeah. Because when we do our passion, we, don't, we wake up basically not working a single day. Wow. We, do, we are doing what we love to do every single day. Okay. Thank you so much, Fib. By the way, can you invite your followers to your website or to your Facebook page? All right. So if you want to follow me, you can visit me at my Facebook page at Fibolim or Fibolim. You can search it. Every day I give valuable content. Every day I give quotes and also shoot some videos so that I can deliver message to all of them. And you can visit my website, Fibolim.com. By the way, I conduct seminars and events all over the country. And uh, you can just check out my website or my Facebook page for more updates. Uh, again, thank you so much, Fib, for coming here and being a guest of Passionpreneur. Again, we thank Handuro Pizza, Mr. Eric Smith, for allowing us to shoot here and for this yummy food. Thank you so much. Again, if you're looking for some yummy pizza and a place to chill, especially with bands and live acoustic bands, check out Handuro Pizza. By the way, if you're watching this in Facebook, you can comment below, ask questions that we can address it and we can talk about it in future episodes. Also, if you're watching this in YouTube, please click that subscribe button and that bell on the side so that you will be notified for new episodes. Again, thank you so much. This has been Sir Chubby. Like we always say in Passionpreneur, do what you love. Love what you do. You, you are, are a Passionpreneur. Bye-bye.